Hi, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz, and sometimes you guys make re a request that I have to get to right away. So today we are going to dye some 100% wool with some Coke Zero Sugar. Coke Zero Sugar doesn't contain one of the food coloring molecules that we typically use when we're dyeing wool um, with food safe ingredients, but it does contain caramel color. And people want to know, can that work to dye yarn? We know that sodas tend to be acidic, which is one of the reasons why they're not great for our teeth. And although the um, Coke Zero does not contain any citric acid, there are other molecules in here that make it acidic. So first we'll see if we can dye the yarn using straight Coke, nothing else. And if we need to, maybe we'll try pumping up the acid with vinegar. But let's see what happens. You know I love you guys when I'm using my last, whoop, <laughs> my last bottle of soda uh, <laughs> for a dyeing experiment. Coke Zero used to be my favorite soda, but then they changed the formulation to zero sugar and here we are. But with a blind taste test, I didn't really notice much of a difference. So I have poured the entire two liters of soda into my dye pot and I've turned on the heat and we are going to bring it to a boil um, before we add the yarn. So instead of just adding the yarn to the pot like this, I'm going to add dry yarn that I'm going to twist into a hank. And so this will give us some patches of color that are white, um, but I'm just going to loosely twist it because I don't want um, to give too much of a resistance, but it's now just twisted into this nice little hank. And when we're at a boil, I will add this dry yarn to the pot and we'll see if we can get some cool variations of color or if we just pick up a little bit of staining. It's a little hard to tell when we're dealing with soda, but we, I think in addition to the carbonation bubbles, we are approaching a boil. So I am going to turn down the heat to be pretty low and we are going to add the yarn. So I'm going to add the dry yarn into the pot and then use a slotted spoon to slowly lower it into the soda. So immediately the yarn is soaking up this very rich brown color. And ooh, I kind of like that part of this is above the surface and some of it is in the pot. Um, I love it when we can get some variations of color. But I really don't know if this caramel color will bind to the yarn or not. Um, so I guess I will come back in 10 minutes and we'll see if, you know, if our water is starting to clear at all or if we've merely just uh, soaked the soda into the yarn itself and that's why it's looking nice and brown. It has been 10 minutes and I mean I don't really even need to show you that there's still a lot of color left um, over here and I'm not sure yeah, if there's any noticeable difference um, in color with the yarn. Um, I'm not optimistic about this working, um, although I would be happy to eat my words at the end of the video. Um, the heat is still on the pot and we are at just below a boil. If I bring the heat up then we start bubbling and I really don't want to felt the yarn. But you know, we'll have to see what happens. So I'll come back in another 10 minutes. We're at 20 minutes and there is still a ton of color in the pot. It doesn't seem to be going into the yarn. 
this is really starting to remind me of when I dyed yarn with Merlot and that we got this nice brown but that stayed in the yarn. We got a good stain but most of the color just uh, remained in the pot. But since we're 20 minutes in, just in case it's not acidic enough, I'm going to add a total of a quarter cup whoops, of white vinegar, which I believe is equivalent to about three tablespoons. Um, now, as I said, I believe that soda is pretty acidic already, but I am doing this just so that way there is no doubt <laughs> about what is going on. And huh. yeah, I also think that it would be hard to use my pH paper on a colored liquid because I don't know, um, that might make it harder to read the results. We're still at just below a simmer and I will be back in, I think I'll come back in 20 minutes um, to give this a fair shot. We have now been at just below a boil with the yarn in the pot for 40 minutes and we still have a ton of color in the dye bath. Um, so it's been 40 minutes total, 20 minutes with additional vinegar. And I'm now gonna turn off the heat entirely. But I'm gonna leave the yarn in the pot because I'm gonna let it cool while in the pot to give the yarn a maximal chance to absorb any color from the soda. But if you compare the Coke Zero in contrast with uh, the Orange Fanta or the Hawaiian Punch that we've done in some of the previous videos, um, this caramel color is beha you know, behaving differently um, than these other food coloring molecules. Not only did I let this yarn cool completely in the pot, but I let it soak overnight in the pot as well. And so now we are ready to wash the fibers to see if any color is in the yarn. And if we got any variation of color, with it being twisted up like we usually see with food coloring. Um, but I have a feeling that we may not see a lot of variation of color. But let's wash it and see what we get. Let's get this yarn into here and we're gonna start adding some cool water. And immediately you can see just how much color there is in the yarn. And let's unwind it. Yeah, and look at all that color that's immediately just coming out. A lot of this, a lot of the color that is just soaking out is due to the fact the yarn just soaked up coke. Um, and so the soda is just present in the fibers, kind of like a sponge. So that's part of what needs to come out. And now I'm going to start adding some dish soap to this as well. But as color is coming out of the yarn, there is still some color that remains in the fiber. And well, right now there could be a little bit of variation and it looks like even whatever this tie is took up a little more color but I have a feeling that this will require a fair amount of washing oh yep even more color is coming out um, this is a little bit reminiscent of when we dye yarn with tea in that we got uh, you know, kind of like a very muted pan, which is pretty, but it would be a lot cheaper to you if you wanted to achieve this kind of color. It would be a lot cheaper to use a tea bag, um, not to mention easier and adding less stuff to the pot. But I wonder when. 
going to start to clear. All right, at least the color coming out is cooler. Cooler now. I mean, when you spill soda on something, you can get the color to come out. So. I wonder at what point it'll stop rinsing out. I mean, it might not ever really stop if it uh, isn't permanently bound to the fiber. But anyway, I am going to let, I think I'm going to let this soak in soapy water for a while and then continue to wash it um, to remove as much of the soda as possible. But I do wish I knew what these pies were made out of because they seem to be a bit darker. Um, and so they seem to have absorbed a bit more color than the rest of the fiber. But yeah, so, okay, on the camera, the water is starting to look pretty clear. But from here, I can tell you that it definitely is beige-ish. Um, very weak tea. But anyway, at this point, I am going to let this yarn just sit um, and soak for a while. And then I will rinse until, you know, the water is as clear as I can make it. And then we'll hang the yarn up to dry and come back. Here is the yarn that we dyed with Coke Zero. It is a nice, pretty tan color. And you know, looking at that, you think, oh yeah, we totally stained the yarn a bit. But here's the yarn that we started out with. So yes, we were able to dye the yarn with Coke Zero. However, it is very, very subtle. Now, there is one spot that seemed to have taken up a lot of color compared with the yarn we dyed and the original yarn. And this is the tie that was on here. And I do not know what the fiber content is of the tie because this was on the skein that I purchased from Knit Picks. But I'm wondering if it is a wool nylon blend. So it is possible, you guys, that you can use caramel color to dye nylon blends or superwash yarns. But it did not work anything magical on the 100% wool. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this dyeing experiment. I am always happy to try things out that you suggest. If you want to help support more fun videos like this, please check out the Dye Pot Weekly Kickstarter campaign. There are sponsorship slots um, where you can sponsor one of the upcoming episodes of Dye Pot Weekly and your support will help fund the materials, uh, the yarn, the dye, and other tools needed to create these episodes. Thank you so much for your support. I look forward to seeing what other dyeing experiments you suggest, and I look forward to making more exciting dyeing videos in the future.